안녕하세요. You. 안녕하세요. Hey you. It's Natalia, and I have studied Korean for a few years now. I have self-studied the language. I have studied Korean in Korea in Korean. If I didn't use a variation of Korea slash Korean enough times, right there. And over the past year or so, I've been taking one-on-one -on -one classes about two to three times a week. So I like to believe <laughs> that I have found a study method for learning Korean grammar that really, really works, at least for me. So I'd like to share a few of my tips with you guys to help you, you know, make your way through learning Korean. I don't, I'm sorry, it's really early in the morning and I'm really hungry, so I might be a little weird. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Go, go. Wait. I forgot to mention, this video and the next few videos of this month are gonna be in collaboration with two of my lovely, lovely friends that I hang out with virtually, cause you know, Penny, every weekend. And those two friends are Chloe and Denai. Hey everyone, my name is Chloe, also known as Strong Blondie Studies. I'm mainly focusing on Japanese at the moment, so that's what most of my content is based around. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and on my website. So I hope to see you there soon. Hello, my name is Tanai. I have been learning Chinese for two and a half years now. Um, and I mainly post vlogs about my life and about my Chinese studies here on YouTube and on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check me out and I'll see you soon. So my first tip is something I have mentioned on my channel before, and that's to stop taking so many notes or completely just stop taking notes. Completely. Like I know school has conditioned us to think that like taking notes means that you're actually studying or it means that you're doing like some quality study time, you know, that you're really learning if you're taking notes, but um, that's not true. Uh, now there are obviously times where you should be taking notes, but there are also a lot of times where you shouldn't be taking notes. Like if you're self studying Korean, I'm sorry, I really don't see why you would ever need to be taking notes. Like the whole point of taking notes is to write something down that your teacher says that isn't in the textbook or isn't in, you know, the PDF handout they gave you or in your like downloadable, I don't know, resource or something like that, right? It's to write down something that's not already there. <laughs> But if you're self-studying all like everything you're learning is already in that textbook or in that resource that you have like obviously if you're supplementing your textbook or your main resource with like random videos on YouTube or random like blog posts about learning Korean there's bound to be something that you want to write down and when that happens I just write it in my textbook like you guys have asked me multiple times, like, hey, Natalia, can you share your like grammar notes or your Korean notes? And I'm like, I don't have any, well, any recent ones. <laughs> the last time I took Korean notes was when I was like in Korea in a classroom setting because that was different. Like our textbooks, this is the textbook we used when I was studying in Korea. And this has no explanation of like the ground points, like literally none. It makes the assumption that your teacher is going to explain everything, which he did because, you know, he was the author of this book and he was a really, really good teacher, but he didn't put any explanations in this book. So I have so many notes from that year where I was learning Korean in Korea and it made sense, you know, because I had to write down what he was saying because that's all I had. There's nothing in here. Okay, there's like one sentence in here that tells you what's up and sometimes there was two, but like not enough to really learn Korean. I just ask, I politely ask that if you're taking notes to reconsider or reevaluate why you're taking notes and to determine if it's actually beneficial because you can move or you can improve so much faster if you take out that you have to copy your textbook down and your spiral element of your uh, study sessions. I'm just saying. And that brings me to tip number two. Tip number two. Use multiple resources to learn grammar. And unfortunately, that does not mean go buy all the Korean books you have access to. And it doesn't mean buy a membership to this website or like a subscription to this app or that app or something, which could be good or bad, depending on if you were trying to spend money or not. In my case, I have found that it is extremely beneficial to read or listen to multiple explanations of the same grammar point. Like, so lately the main resource or the main way I've been learning Korean or Korean grammar is through my teacher just because I don't have the motivation or energy to learn outside of my classes. I know, I know, I'm such a bad like Korean language YouTuber. I've mainly been learning through my classes. So um, we use this book, we use the Seoul National Level 4 book or 4A book 
to learn Korean and specifically Korean grammar. Each chapter has four grammar structures that it teaches or introduces the student to. If you're wondering, no, I don't think it's good for self-study. I don't think it's good for self-study. We can get into that in a different video, but um, usually my teacher will introduce me to a grammar point and once she has you know, explained it to me, we've done a little bit of practice. If it does not like click, automatically with me, which I want to say about half of them don't click automatically with me. Then after the lesson, I will read the explanation that's in the back of the book because for some odd reason, this book, like when the grammar point is introduced in the chapter, there's no explanation, like no explanation at all. Then it has example sentences. Like there's no explanation on what it means. There's no explanation on how to like use it or anything. But if you flip to the index, there's like a short explanation. It's maybe like this big. Yeah, it's not uh, not very big, but I will go and I will read that. And usually after that, it makes a little more sense. Again, not enough to like feel like I can use it myself most of the time. Um, but after that, I will actually go watch several YouTube videos on how to use the grammar and what it means and how to conjugate it. Basically, like I will go from my teacher's explanation to the book's explanation to YouTube. And my favorite channels for learning grammar are Learn Korean with Go Billy Korean, which I'm sure like you guys are all familiar with, but love his grammar videos, so good. So I will watch his video first, and then if there is one, I will watch a topic study one. And this one is basically like Song Sing Nim, like actual Korean Song Sing Nim, and they teach the grammar point in Korean, which I really like because if I didn't mention before, my Korean classes are in full Korean, like my one on one classes, they're full Korean. So I just prefer to learn in Korean. I don't know why, it makes me feel very accomplished. It makes me remember how far I have come when I'm able to learn the language in Korean, even though it makes it harder. But yeah, so I highly recommend that you guys try and do that. If you have a textbook that you're learning from, explanation doesn't make sense or like it's still like really fuzzy. I don't know why I did this, but if it's still fuzzy, like go ahead and find other explanations. If you can't find a video for that grammar structure, then go ahead and try looking up like blog posts online and things like that. Usually there are amazing resources for learning grammar online that are completely free. Like you guys ask me about how to study Korean.com a lot and I love that website. I love that website. Their grammar explanations are Chef's kiss. They're so good. They're so thorough. They give so many example sentences. Like guys, if you don't have a textbook, you can just learn grammar through their website. And honestly, I think they're a little better than Talk To Me Korean because their explanations are way more thorough. They give you more example sentences and they even have vocab lists so that you can learn vocab and grammar at the same time. So now that you understand the grammar, it's time to like start using it yourself so that you can use it in actual conversation when the moment arises, when it's your time to shine. Okay, that was a little dramatic, but you know, so that when you are in the situation where you are conversing in Korean or you're writing something in Korean or whatever, you wanna be actually like able to use it. Like, yes, it's nice to understand, but to use it and to understand, like, yes, that is the goal. Or at least it's the goal for most of us. So how do you get there? That brings me to tip number three, and that is to use the grammar whenever you can. Now, because I take Korean lessons, my teacher really pushes me to start making my own sentences like immediately after she explains the grammar, which, Something name that is so hard to do and like she knows because anytime she tells me to do that I go <sighs> Okay, <laughs> and she's asked me. She's like you're my only student that does that Why do you do that? And I'm like cuz I'm stressed <laughs> anyway That is not what you came here for but basically just like anyone who is self-studying Korean I really need a lot of exposure and a lot of practice to really feel like I have mastered it and can use it in conversation or in writing if it's something that's used more in writing than in speaking but yeah you, you know what i mean and i know a lot of people seem to think that like you need a native speaker like to practice the words you've learned or the phrases or the grammar or this or that and i would like to take a moment to say that is completely untrue you do not need a native speaker and while i will admit yes it has been so helpful to have my teacher and to have my korean friends that are there to like kind of help me along the way you don't need a native speaker to like really get good at Korean like I know so many people that have self-studied and they're so good at Korean like please stop putting yourself into this little box you can do so many of these things by yourself you can use the sentence in a short diary entry you can say a like practice sentence while you're in the shower that you just made up on the fly you can 
write a little sentence, like practice sentence. And when I say practice sentence, I don't mean an example sentence. I mean a sentence that you came up with at the bottom of your notes when you're in another class and you're just not paying attention. Like I know those things aren't what we envision when we think of like practicing grammar or something. Those are the things that add up. And again, yes, like if you have a teacher, it's amazing to get that immediate feedback for them to give you corrections and explain to you why the sentence you made is wrong. But if you don't have that opportunity to be taking classes, then even like having a Korean friend, while yes, they can tell you if your sentence is right or wrong, like they can't tell you why. And if you are super concerned with like knowing if your sentence that you made is right or wrong, you can go to apps like Hi Native or Hello Talk and like post to the moments tab. Like that's what I do when I'm really, really concerned about if something is right or wrong, I'll just post it there and see what the natives say. And you know, there's like a little genie in a box and they give you like, some help, like obviously it's not a friendship. Most of the time it's not like a real friendship, but if you really, really need those answers, you can get them there. And bonus tip, if you are a beginner and you're kind of like hesitant or you are struggling to make your own sentences as a lot of you guys have told me, don't be ashamed to just take the example sentence in your textbook or your resource and just switch out some of the words. Like don't be ashamed to do that, like literally, this textbook, this is an upper intermediate textbook and they have that. That is an actual exercise. They have a dialogue and they have us switch out certain parts of it. Like this, that's literally the thing they make us do in here. And my teacher never skips that part. The Korean grammar in use book also has exercises like that. And it's really helpful. Like don't be ashamed or think that having to take the sentence that is in front of you and just switch out the words means that you don't understand. That's not what that means. Okay, so yeah, bonus tip. Do that, just try it out and eventually you'll be able to start making your own sentences. As I mentioned, this video and the next few videos are gonna be in collaboration with my friends Chloe and Denai. Chloe's video is gonna be about improving your like reading skills in Japanese and Denai's is gonna be about improving your listening skills in Chinese. So if you're interested in those videos, they're in the description box. Please check them out. These are my best, best friends. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. So, time bye you guys, bye.